It's the state of the dungeon. It's a video that Rob does about his games. Yeah! Greetings. I am Galhard Vanathakatoi, warrior of my people and a member of the Grand Order. I have rejoined my companions in our quest against the Cult of the Dragon, pursuing one Varum the White. It took us to the tomb of Dedarius, a few days travel away from Borskir Bridge. We had already penetrated into the tomb which is the site of some sort of scrying device. Most likely the reason why Verum is there. We faced several challenges, riddles, trifles, nothing that could stop us. But, as we were going along, we passed signs of Verum's trickery, a room full of devils that he had conjured to watch away that we had not come. We came to no conflict with them, but penetrated further. Eventually, we found a chamber that housed the basin that appeared to be the scrying pool that was required by Verum and might serve us in kind. The basin was empty. We went, as we were recovering uh, from a prior fight, I went around with uh, the Dwarven Ranger. I'm still getting familiar with him. It seems like he is about as strong as I and favors large weaponry, so we have things in common. We went back to the room with a well to gather water. A bucket full and a helmet full we tried to bring back. But, interestingly enough, water vanishes from the place as if by magic. There's also a trough that would run directly into the basin, but the water never wetted the bottom of the basin. It evaporates far too quickly. When we returned, we all came to that conclusion. So, we instead went to a door marked with a man with a lantern holding it aloft. Kaithion believes that it is a entrance to a tomb, and considering the wizard who built this place is, well, long dead, that seemed likely. So we went in, we found a room with a large sarcophagus. Now, to set the incidents up here, the room with the basin had bodies in it, apparently of cultists, skewered with arrows. We looked for traps and the like, but there weren't any in the room with the basin. So we expected some sort of archery or some sort of traps in this room. But there was none. Instead, we heard a voice that came from all around us. It apparently came from the dead wizard. It said that it approved of our mission, as we were there seeking knowledge which it valued. And it knew the nature of our quest that we sought the dwarf Varum. It told us that the dwarf had been taken by Yuan Ti the vile and depraved snake men, and that they had passed through a secret door at the back of the sarcophagus room. It revealed the secret door, and we prepared to travel through it after our quarry. Uh, the nature of Didaris and how he talked to us, we do not know. But it is magic and not worth worrying about for us. So we went down into the secret passage, which only traveled a short while before it opened into a room 
with six lizard men. Obviously, the wizard knew the difference between li lizard men and Wan Ti, so these were just the guards at the gate. I heard one scrabbling in the darkness. It sounded like it was trying to run for reinforcements. So I dashed into the room and grasped at one. Turns out lizard folk are slippery and very difficult to keep a grasp on for any length of time while they're squirming. The rest of the group broke in behind me and began engaging the lizard men in earnest and such paltry creatures are no match for the Grand Order. They were being butchered behind me. I was being bedeviled by two, but I felt it was not necessary to do much more than, well, glower at them. It was dark. There was room, uh, lightning coming in from behind the braziers in the sarcophagus room, but I couldn't see very much inside. Goliaths do not have the same vision that the dwarves and elves have. So, the battle was something of an uncertain one. Lydia demonstrated the potency of her new belt, skewering and badly damaging one of the lizard men with but a single blow. I finished the job by punching it in the back and breaking through its spine and punching out of its chest. That being said, there wasn't much left for me to do. One had already gotten away into the darkness, and I went forward and around and helped to finish off another. The room was empty and the battle was ours. <clears throat> I lit a torch, which would prove to be my one constant weapon through the rest of this fight. It was at this time that our ranger was looking down the stairs, the other exit out of this cavernous chamber. And he reported to us that reinforcements were coming. The one that had run were coming back with six more of its fellows. It should have brought more. Would have at least been more interesting. However, as these creatures were armed with poisoned weapons, true, our two dwarves weren't that bothered by it, but I felt the anger welling up in me, within me from this dishonorable combat. I picked up the body of one of the deceased lizard men, and I waited at the edge of the landing. The lizard men came across this strange bridge at the foot of the stairs. They traveled slowly and cautiously. Once they got to the stairs, they ran up. They came to challenge us. They found death. As our forces rained weaponry down upon them, and Glint seemed to enjoy throwing his hammers as usual. Unfortunately, several of the hammers fell off the bridge and down into the crevasse alongside of it. Well, the lizard folk who came up found out why I had not engaged. I took the body of their comrade, and I charged forward with just my torch sticking up between its legs, and dove forward into the mass in glorious combat. The weight of myself and this dead lizard man pulled the lizard folk down, knocking them down like ten pins. One of them, the unlucky one in the back, spilled off of the stairway and slid off of the bridge. Turned out that it was very slick, interesting to know, and nice of him to inform us of that fact. The group then came upon them with a vengeance. They were prone and easy prey. Our blades were wetted again and again, slaughtering these lizard folk, but they had an unseen ally. We were facing arrow fire from the darkness. They were using our lights as the beacons for their arrows. I felt a few and felt the sting of poison, which only maddened me the more. So what I did was once I was clear, and I believe as a weapon I was swinging the body of one of the dead lizard men. It worked quite well, and I found it pleasant to kill them with their own kind. Eventually the body broke, leaving me with just a stump of a tail. 
So, with no enemies about me again, Lydia, Glint, uh, Balthagor, certainly being effective, and Kytheon was wielding a large greatsword. I did not think it his style, but it seemed to be grisly effective in a necromantic sort of way. I don't, I don't quite feel comfortable with. Apparently he's made a pact with this weapon, but I, I don't favor that sword. But, seeing that there were assailants on the other side of the bridge, I charged forward. The rage was upon me. I leapt onto the body of one of the dead lizard men and slid across the bridge on its back. My light from my torch revealed the enemy. Two Yuan Ti, one with a bow and the other one with some sort of a curvy sword. It was all snaky. It fit its idiom, I suppose. But they were just out of my reach, you see. I had no problem on this treacherous bridge for one who has climbed the highest peaks as I have. It was nothing. The Wan Ti did not know what to make of me, but they would soon learn. Of course, as I revealed them, my allies began the hurling of the hammers and crossbows and whatnot. They didn't trust the bridge, despite the fact that I had revealed the dangers. Perhaps they did not trust their coordination. Perhaps they feared to slip and plumb it down into the abyss. It sounded like a painful process. I was soon to prove that. <laughs> With my progress arrested and is still being peppered with those annoying poisoned arrows, I move forward, kicking against the bridge and sliding further along the carcass of the losing man at my feet. I slammed into the Yuan Ti who stood before me with his little sword. Tortured one hand, I grabbed one hand around his body, hurled myself back and threw it off of the bridge. <laughs> I heard it splatter into the ground below. Glorious combat was mine! That left the remaining Yuan Ti in quite a pickle. It was a nasty brute. The upper head, arms, torso, that of a human, but the... Everything below is a large snake. How the thing managed to move without falling over, I don't know. But, <clears throat> the rest of the group approached to help me butcher the last remaining Yuan Ti. It thought it would be clever. It thought that it would take the weakest of our member and destroy her. It tried to grab Lydia. <laughs> Foolish snake! She is blessed with a belt of incredible strength. She's stronger than any person in our group. He might have as well attempted to grab a pillar and pull an entire room down with him. <laughs> he was left dangling, but before he could escape and perhaps end its own life at the bottom of the pit, I reached out for its life. With my hand, I caught it by the scruff of its vile neck. It hung there limply, though, clearly wishing that it were elsewhere. I looked at Lydia knowingly and asked if she'd like a tug of war. She nodded in assent, and we both pulled. We ripped the creature in twain. Its gore and viscera sprayed into the pit, raining down upon the that which dwelled below. <clears throat> Glint! Fearing for the loss of his hammers, lit a torch and tossed it down the pit. He saw that the pit was some eighty feet below us, and he saw that the Yuan Ti that I had thrown down was not dead. He was instead transforming itself further into a snake. He told me that it was down there. He told me, and the red thirst consumed me. I still had no thought for my good axe. I had the upper torso of the abomination in my hands. So I took it, and I ran to the edge of the bridge, and I dove where he pointed. I dove down into the pit. 
with no thought for anything but that I must end the life of this abomination. And so I plummeted. I saw the creature below in the light, the ghastly light the torch lit upon the bottom of the pit. I landed upon it and crushed it with its own partner. <laughs> it stung a bit. I was still in the grip of the rage and the pain was but slight, but... Perhaps it might not have been the wisest of choices, but my foe is dead. That's what I found out there were many snakes down there with me. Turns out they were infant Wanti. I thought the horrors were people that had been transformed by a curse of some sort, but no, they're, they're little snaky things. Poisonous, yes, certainly. They attacked at me. <laughs> they, they might as well have been attacking a, a log for all the harm they could do to me. But a bit. My allies up there were thinking about coming down to help me, which would have been nice. Uh, instead, realized that they could assist me by throwing fire down at them. Of course, we don't have a proper wizard, but hammers work quite well. Whatever else was plinking down around, ooh, excuse me, around me seemed to have a toll on the little horrors. Then, wishing it ended, at about the limits of my anger and my wrath, I took my torch and I clubbed the little uh, horrors. And then, when I had clubbed them thoroughly with my torch, I reached for anything that was a weapon, and I found the tail of the snaky abomination that I had just crushed, and I smited the last of them down with the corpse of the uh, elder, turning all of them into putty. The rage left me then, and I once more became myself. A bit sore for the travel, no doubt pocked with some wounds, a fair amount of poison flowing through me, there's no doubt of that. I grabbed some of the infant Wan Ti into a sack. I need a weapon for my next battle, don't I? And my friends helped me back up with a rope, got me back up to the bridge. We moved to the end of the bridge. There's another staircase leading down from there. We decided to huddle there and allow Kytheon to work his healing magic. Some of us are injured. I am perhaps most of all, but, well, the, the red rage does not allow me uh, much thought for self-preservation sometimes. <laughs> and yet I live. So as we were congregating, resting, waiting for his spell, I decided to look around. At the end of this landing we are at, there's a tunnel that goes off to the right, and then a tunnel that goes off straight. I saw nothing, I heard nothing, but Kytheon, that one has a good mind and a good set of ears. He heard motion and directed us to be wary. Unfortunately, he was correct. We are perhaps not at our best for this fight. But looking around the corridor, our light attracted attention as well as the sound of battle. We were not quiet. And surely enough, more lizard men approaching. I see at least a few, and there's more behind them, perhaps more Wan Ti. I also see open hallways beyond them, so if we keep fighting, others will hear and be attracted to the sound. We could have the entire population of Wan Ti and lizard folk here at our feet. I don't really look forward to that. Oh, the battle will be incredible, but... My allies might be the worse for wear. They need some time to rest and heal. Maybe I should challenge them all myself and give my allies time, but against that many foes, I don't think I could take them all out at once. 
Not now, certainly. The, my rage is, is fading as I worry more for my allies, so... I'll tell you what happens when I make my next report. For now, long live the Grand Order. It's time to fight some more scaly ones. Farewell!